throw the softball up. <laughs> How do you feel eight hours after? Is it, you said it last time it hasn't sunk in, has it now? Uh, no, no, nah, it hasn't. Uh, probably won't until the off season. I think. Um, obviously, all our attention and focus is on this weekend, but um, yeah, it hasn't sunk in. And um, probably firstly, I want to give a shout out to Nick Dacos. Um, he's had such an amazing season so far, and it hasn't finished for him yet either. But um, if it wasn't for his injury, I think the medal would have been his and uh, he would have been a thoroughly deserving winner and I, I feel for, for Nick, um, he's had so much pressure and intensity and scrutiny on him this year and the way that he's performed has been um, amazing to watch uh, and yeah, I, I feel for him and, and also Bond as well, I think he had an amazing year once again, he's such a great player to watch, one of my favourites to watch so um, I, I do feel a little bit for those two. Um, in particular, Nick, uh, yeah, it's, his injury probably cost him a, a Brownlow medal, but I'm sure he'll be um, in amongst it for the next 15 years. So, um, yeah, but yeah, feel very hum humbled as well. Uh, I've received a lot of really nice messages from, from people um, all around Australia, so I thank them for that. And um, looking forward to today's open training session. We've got a, a heap of fans here with more to roll in um, over the next hour or two, so uh, excited for, for today and, and the rest of the week now. When did you... I'm sure there's another medal you'd like to add around your neck on Saturday. Absolutely, yeah, that's that's the main one. Um, yeah, that'll be my most treasured and, and favourite medal of all time if, if we can get the job done on Saturday. When well, did you three years ago you said you'd trade in your round load for a friendship. Well, now you've got one in the bank anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'll trade them both. So, uh, yeah, that's the ultimate goal. And um, having been through this process before um, and not having a premiership around my neck, I know that I, I know that that's going to be the best feeling in the world if I can achieve that with, with this group and this club um, on Saturday. So I'm, I'm pumped. Can't wait. When you look at some of the names, Nat Five, Gary Ablett Jr., Chris Judd, Adam Goods, Robert Harvey, Craig Williams, the greats of the game. You're in that company now. How does that sit? Oh, I don't think I'm in that company. I'm very um, lucky and fortunate to have my name amongst them with this award, but um, I don't see myself with those guys in terms of status of the game. And oh, they're they're Hall of Famers, all of those guys. And yeah, yeah, don't really see myself in amongst that echelon of, of player. How did you see walking in there last night? Are you overly optimistic or thinking much about it? But how do you? Yeah, I, it was an interesting year. I feel like our team performed so evenly throughout the year, um, especially as midfielders, and midfielders tend to poll most of the votes. Um, I just thought as a group we, we performed quite well, and I didn't really know how it would play out. I thought I had my moments. I had some um, strong games where I thought I'd poll, and then there were a lot of games where they could have gone to, to anyone. and. Um, Luckily for me, it, it fell my way, but I feel like throughout the night there were six, seven games where I could have polled one, two, three or none, and um, I was lucky enough that I got enough to, to win the medal, but um, it speaks volumes for our group. I had no, I honestly didn't think I'd be in this position, so um, yeah, it was a crazy folk count, wasn't it? It was, it was wild, so um, yeah, just fortunate it fell, fell my way in the end. Were you surprised that game against the Giants when Charlie was seven? Yes, yeah, I, w I was surprised. Um, I think that's the beauty of the Brownlow, though. There were probably games where I thought I would poll a bit later, like through the middle part of the season, where I didn't pick up votes or polled one and thought I might get two or three that game. So I think it comes around, um, swings and roundabouts, and, yeah, I was lucky that game to poll, um, but maybe unlucky in, in some others. So I don't really I don't really know. It's That's the beauty of the Brownlow, isn't it, that you never know how the umpires are going to vote and um, yeah, fortunate that it fell my way at the end. You talked about that previous grand final experience, what, what did you learn from that? What, what, what message have you been telling the boys this week? Uh, oh, I think I said it last night, but um, I was very young uh, with that experience in 2013 and probably didn't soak it up enough and, and thought that it would just happen again and again and I'd be back in that position the next year and the year after that and um, I haven't been back to a grand final. so. For me, it's just about embracing all of this. Um, the open training sessions, 
uh, the media, the parade. I'm just enjoying every moment of that with not only my teammates in the club, but my family as well. Get Jules involved and Piper and just soak it up um, and try and find a really good balance of enjoying it. And then when we're on the track, um, locking down and locking in, focusing on Collingwood, what we've got to do to win that game, um, and then switching off at the right time and enjoying the week. What about your hometown, Lockheed, with another, another Brownlow medal, and, and how will they be uh, you know, preparing for the week? All 15 of them in Kybe. <laughs> um, no, nah, it's, yeah, I, I feel really proud, and um, I'm sure the town is, is proud as well. I haven't really spoken to too many people um, yet. I tried to go straight to bed when I got home. Spoke to mum and dad really, really briefly, um, but I haven't really spoken to too many people. Um, and I'll, I'll probably save phone calls and well wishes and everything until after after um, the game on Saturday. Were you wearing sweet yeah, I think so. Um, they didn't really say too much. They were just really proud and, and happy for me. Um, but yeah, they were probably a bit surprised. There was a, there was a genuine chance a couple of years ago that you might have left this club. Possibility of much public you're really happy with the decision you made to stay in Brisbane? Yes, and yeah, the decision wasn't wasn't that hard. Um, had a conversation that got a little bit out of hand, but um, I've loved my five year, all five years at this club. COVID was a, a weird time for everyone, and um, now nah, we were always uh, planning on staying. So um, yeah. Very happy. I love this footy club and love the people involved. It's a great place to work. Um, I'm very fortunate, and Jules loves Brisbane now as well. I think she's, she calls it home now, which is which is awesome. Do you believe in omens, mate? Simon Black in the grand final against Collingwood in that same room. Uh, I think I said it. someone. Hey, asked me oh, that no, last you night. Thought about it, have you uh, I don't think I'd really believe in them. Um, it's not just going to happen. We've got to go out and play well and execute and. Get the result. Um, no, I don't really believe in, in that stuff. No. <laughs> but um, Aka said when he won it in 2001, in going into a grand finals, he, he called it the Superman complex. He thought being the best player in the game, he had to go out and do everything. Yeah. Is that like how do you approach this weekend now, knowing that you've got two leagues? Um, yeah, I've got to reset pretty quickly. Um, it was pretty overwhelming last night, but I feel like I'm mature enough now to switch that part off. Um, I don't, don't feel that necessity at all. I think the last two finals have probably showed that. I've, I've been um, far from the best player on the ground in, in both finals and we've had two really good wins, so I don't have to do anything special on the weekend. I've just got to play my role, hunt the footy, hunt, hunt the pies, um, try and get the ball going our way, and um, that's my role. It's, it's not to go and do anything special kick goals or whatever, it's just about playing my part in, in what's uh, an amazing team, so um, we're all about the team, it's not about me, uh, so yeah, I don't have to do anything special at all, I don't feel that pressure one little bit. What you do, when it's all goes to kick it in a GF, what, what makes him such a, a unique and valuable teammate? Yeah, yeah, he's uh, one, of the, one of many, but one of um, the heart and soul players of this footy club, he's seen it all. Um, Love Zorks and the way he goes about it. His passion and love for this club is is unrivalled, and he's been through um, some really tough times with this footy club. And um, hopefully, we can deliver a premiership medallion for him. Um, I love that bloke and, and what he's brought to this footy club. He's been an amazing mentor and, and friend of mine for the last five years. And um, congrats to him on on 250. What a way to to bring that up in a grand final and hopefully we can celebrate um, afterwards with, with uh, 23 medallions around our necks and he'd be well deserving of a premiership. He is, yeah. Yeah, he's been very important for us in, in both finals and played crucial roles. So, um, yeah, he's an, he's, he's an unbelievable player. His ball use, I think he's an underrated kicker of the footy. I think he's probably along with Huey, and I'm biased, but those two, and Kitty Coleman on the weekend, that was pretty special, but those two, um, Huey and Zorks, for a long time have been two of the best ball users in the comp, and his kicking, field kicking, is something else, Zorks, so he sets us up um, very well, and um, the heart and energy that he plays with really drives us. Another person that you probably want to deliver a medal to on Saturday is your coach, Chris Fagan. He's going to be the oldest coach in the grand final. Geez, he won't like that record, really. <laughs> but um, how special was it last night to have him present you with your medal um, and, and 
and just tell us about your relationship with him and how special it would be to do Yeah, it would mean everything um, to me and, and the group and the footy club to get Fags a premiership. I feel like he deserves it as much as anyone. and. He's been through a lot as well, um, obviously the last 12 months, but I think just his coaching journey and where he's come from as a teacher to um, coaching in an AFL Grand Final is an amazing story and um, he'll, he'll be a friend of mine for, for life and um, love him dearly. Lockie, what was part of his pitch to help get you here in the first place? Uh, I think he saw me fitting in really well with this midfield and, and the role that I could play in bringing um, some of the younger mids up to speed with the game and, and playing a leadership sort of role with the group um, and just he, he loved my strengths um, didn't mention any of my weaknesses um, and yeah he, he just thought I could be a, a crucial part of a premiership team at, at this club and um, it wasn't just him it was Dom the list manager and a lot of other people David Noble at the time um, so yeah very thankful that the club wanted to have my services here and um, very glad I made that decision Oh, maybe. I don't know. It's um, I'm sure Grand Final Day, the weather probably doesn't advantage anyone. It's such a big occasion that we won't be thinking too much about that. But um, yeah, hope for the fans. That's nice. That it'll be a nice warm day. Um, yeah, we'll have to hydrate. I didn't know that it was going to be 28. So there you go. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, it's awesome. Already there's a, a fairly big crowd um, around us. So I uh, love the passion and energy that our fans bring and they, they drive us. Um, I think you, the record at the Gabba this year speaks for itself and what our, fr our fans do for us. And hopefully they're in full voice against the Magpie Army uh, on, on Saturday and um, can make a lot of noise, which I'm sure they will. And our fans in Melbourne are incredibly passionate as well and um, shout out to them for the, the noise and energy they bring to our Melbourne games too. And I'm sure um, they'll bring that this weekend. I know you joked about Paris being the Cup that you guys had a win on Saturday. Do you have a discussion with you and Paris about how three people did one cup? Uh, nah, we'll sort that out if, if that comes. Um, haven't thought that far ahead yet. Who's awesome good? What's that, sorry? Who's good? Who's making the good? Uh, don't know, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe, yeah, rock, paper, scissors, we'll sort that out. Uh, Lucky, what about the Lions' good record against the, against the Pies over the years? Did you know, did that give you a little bit of confidence going into the game? Not really. Our confidence comes from our performances probably over the last six weeks rather than, or one of them was against Collingwood, which was um, a really important and, and good win, but um, their team will change a fair bit from, from that game. They've got some pretty um, important ins with Dacos and I don't think Tagoe played that night either. Um, there's probably a couple of others as well. Um, so two of their best players didn't play. So we're under no illusions. It's going to be um, a fierce contest and I don't think we take confidence from it, but we take confidence from where our game sits at the moment and the footy that we've been playing against all opposition. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.